Over the years, African-American engineers and scientists have been behind some of the world's greatest advances. But according to the Pew Research Center, blacks and Hispanics remain underrepresented in STEM-related careers. One organization, the Knowledge House, is addressing that digital divide. Here to tell us more is the co-founder and CEO of TKH, the Knowledge House, Gerilyn Rodriguez. So nice to meet you. Thanks for having me, Sandra. Excited to be here. So the first thing I think it's important for you to lay out what exactly uh, is the Knowledge House and, and, and where do you get this idea? That's a great question. So the Knowledge House is a nonprofit that's been around for seven years. We are headquartered in the South Bronx and our mission is to empower and sustain a talent pipeline of emerging technologists coming from low-income communities. And so we basically provide code and design job training to youth and young adults looking to enter tech. Um, and especially since COVID, uh, there has been so much demand for digital skills training. We started the organization to make sure that first Bronx residents weren't left out of the innovation economy mm -hmm. because we know that the tech sector is growing since the pandemic, 20% of all open jobs are in tech and we wanna be responsive to the needs. So we are committed to growing in the Bronx, but now we're, uh, now we're expanding to different regions as well. Yeah, and talk a little bit about why it is so important to, to get more black and brown students into tech. Yeah, so we know that for years, corporations big and small have been suffering with lack of diversity you know and we know that people of color are consuming these apps these video games yeah. are using these websites that are for the most part traditionally built by white males mm. and we need to turn that around right um there's no reason why people in low-income communities are consuming technology every day, but they're not being trained to produce them. Yeah. And so it's about ownership, right? It's about changing the status quo and it's about equity, diversity, inclusivity, so that the folks who are consuming these products every day start to create them. And once people of color start to create these products and get access to these high paying jobs, then we see just more diversity overall in the innovation yeah. sector. We, we see less biases when these tech products are created. By the people who are using them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, you start also uh, in these kinds of areas, you start building that all important generational wealth as well. Exactly, right, 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 yeah. And um, how we, go ahead. Well, I was gonna mention at the Knowledge House, our applicants come in with $14,000 as their starting salaries. Mm -hmm. When they leave the Knowledge House and they get their first job in tech, we're talking about a starting salary of 85000 So we are seeing people literally triple their salaries. And, you know, that impacts them personally, but it also impacts their household. I would say that impacts everything. So talk to me a little bit about how the Knowledge House accomplishes this. Where are the students coming from? Um, I know the age range, what is it, 14 to 35, that's it? That's your right. target population? That's our target population, yeah. yeah. We have a youth program for high school students looking to get mm -hmm. into tech. And then we have traditional job training programs. And so both programs, the high school program and the adult program are one year long. Mm -hmm. uh, students can choose to study design or computer programming. For the adults, we are also launching a new cybersecurity program. And then they get technical instruction Monday through Wednesday, and they get a weekly career development class on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are there qualifications that students need to have to become a part of the program? So to be eligible for the program, students must have an income of $50,000 or less. That's it. That, that's it, no prior mm -hmm. tech training or? No prior tech training. Um, a lot of our students are coming to us as beginners, so they have no experience in tech. We also do have students who are enrolled in college, but they need more practical skills, so they join our program. And then we have folks that are switching careers. Mm -hmm. 
And so this is a way for them to, to, to get that, that additional education. Now, one of the things you do to help the program uh, you know, be successful is you've got these uh, really important partnerships. You are partnering with corporations. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, so beyond the instruction, students are matched to volunteers for mentorship and they're matched to volunteers for tutoring. And so a lot of these volunteers come from our corporate partnerships. Mm -hmm. Just recently, last month, uh, we partnered with Bloomberg to host a hackathon. And literally 75 of their technologists volunteered to do a day of hacking with Knowledge House students. And they created social good projects to, uh, together. Mm -hmm. One of the projects they created was a volunteer portal that the Knowledge House students will use to, you know, schedule office hours with volunteers or to watch, you know, guest lectures from uh, volunteers. And so these partnerships are so key because they mobilize volunteers to support students, but also they hire. So we have corporate uh, partners that are now taking on interns for the summer. And hopefully those interns convert to full time engineers. Yeah. And is there a cost to be in the program? And are you paid while you're doing the program? Yeah. So because we are accepting low income applicants, the program is completely free. Okay. So we offer a tuition free program and we do offer a stipend. Mm -hmm. So for the adult learners, we offer two to three hundred dollars a month just to help with basic living expenses. We know that especially after COVID, Mm -hmm. Our applicants are coming unemployed or furloughed, and they need that extra cash assistance. Okay. And you are expanding this program to some other cities. We're talking Newark, Atlanta, and Los Angeles, right? Yes, yes. So we identified these cities because there's a lot of people of color that have needs for jobs, but there are also emerging or existing tech ecosystems there. You know, mm -hmm. Atlanta has a growing startup uh, ecosystem and LA, you know, has the media and entertainment jobs and they hire a lot of technologists. Um, so we're excited to be responsive to the growing need, especially because of COVID. And, you know, we are still committed to growing in New York. So we are expanding through New York state as well. What qualifications do applicants have to have? Because I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is such a great deal. You would just have not really be able to handle the number of people that would want to apply. Are there some qualifications that basic qualifications you need to have to to become a part of the program? So for all of our applicants, you must have a household income of 50,000 or less. Mm -hmm. And we do give preference to people of color, okay. uh, women, and anyone who is uh, 14 to 35 years of age. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward. In, in my head, I'm thinking, if you have so many people, how do you choose who, you know, <laughs> right. makes the better? Yeah. I mean, we do have a three-month admissions process mm -hmm. that allows us to vet applicants really for stamina. Stamina mm -hmm. is what we look for. Because as long as you're eligible because you're low income and you're a person of color, what we look for is your interest in technology. And that doesn't mean you need to know how to code or have tech experience. But for example, if you're into vlogging, right? Or if you're into social media, or if you're into video games, then you might be a good fit for our program. This is just a wonderful opportunity. The knowledgehouse.org, that's your website. You can find out yeah. more information about what you do. And my understanding is that you are going to be accepting 200 new students into the program by July first yes so for applicants coming from newark los angeles and atlanta we will be collecting and vetting applications through june mm -hmm. so the program starts in july so you have to hurry up and apply yeah. um, and we're excited to grow the program it is honestly it, it's almost it's one of those things no brainer right we got to yeah. figure out a way to get more people into in, into tech. And as yeah. I said, build, help build that knowledge and generational wealth. Gerilyn mm -hmm. Rodriguez, very nice to meet you. Nice Thank to you me. so I much. Sandra Bookman and Here and Now will be right back.